hi it's daphne welcome back to another new york city reading vlog it is friday evening and i have some interesting plans tonight <laughs> i'm taking myself out on a little date i'm going to kennedy ryan's book signing here in new york for her new book before i let go and i'm quite excited i wonder who will be there <laughs> It's kind of interesting sometimes being in New York because people do things by themselves all the time and I applaud them for that. And apparently I'm one of those people. I just go to book signings by myself and it's great, you know. I'll try to be social, I'll try to push myself to like talk to people. I went by myself to the Babel book signing, which I also vlogged but have not posted yet because I have not finished Babel, put it down, but I'll get to that. I originally wanted to like prioritize my book of the month of books because I needed to finish them to like get my reward but if you don't tell me one I just marked that I like read them already on the app that way I get my reward and there's less pressure to read them right away you know because I earned the reward I bought the books I bought them I cheated but shh, don't tell anybody I kind of want to get back on my romance kick on my kindle and i've just been like dying to pick up heartless by elsie silver this is the second book in her like canadian cowboy country whatever series and everybody has been loving it so i will probably pick that up so this has been a really long clip let's go to the book signing all right this is the fit for the event comfy boots cute denim crop top cozy sweater and my cute book tote book pocket so cute give them a quick like rundown of what the book is yes and I'll I know that some of you may have just gotten your book tonight and haven't started haven't read so we'll try to keep it like spoiler free as much as possible <laughs> at a certain point it's a little bit of a slow burn um, but it is ultimately one woman's one woman and one man um, who thought, were soulmates and thought they'd be together forever and then life dealt them some back-to-back -back blows like life was really lifing yeah. and um, it ended up tearing them apart and from my experience in being married for 25 years wow. um, yeah. Woo. Uh, <laughs> um, when some when tragic things happen like you either run toward each other or you kind of run away from each other like it either it brings you closer or it can wet, drive a wedge between you because you're processing things and dealing with things in ways that aren't really compatible. And that's what happens with this couple. Their journey back to themselves and ultimately their journey back to each other. And one couldn't happen without the other. Like they couldn't make it back to a second chance at love without a lot of healing going on. Hi, so I am back from the book signing. It was absolutely amazing. I was chatting with a bunch of new people and hearing Kennedy Ryan speak about this book and how much went into it, like the meaning behind mental health, like rep in it and taking care of yourself and being gentle with yourself. That's what she signed on the inside. It says, sorry, I'm a little congested. It says, 
be gentle with yourself and she signed it kennedy ryan and i'm just so excited to dive right into this with all the hype that i'm feeling from this experience so this is the reading before i let go by kennedy ryan vlog so you got to see me go to the book signing and now i will share all my thoughts once i get into it if you don't know this book is about a couple that was previously married they got divorced they have two children together one sorry i'm a little stuffed up they have a 13 year old daughter and like a young son and they own a restaurant business together there's some grief going on i believe it was a miscarriage i don't know if that's a spoiler because i haven't read it but i've heard that the two main characters the two parents grieve in different ways and it just kind of pulls them apart and it's their story of grief our heroine going through therapy i have heard that it's also quite women's fiction so i'm gonna go in with that expectation obviously it's still gonna be romantic and smutty and heartfelt and emotional so i'm ready for that as well and it's a second chance romance between that couple it's very different than any other romance i've read before they are an older couple and they have older kids so i'm very intrigued i might still read the romance i started on my kindle which is heartless uh, i started reading it on my way up to the event so i might read that as well in this vlog so i'll read those two books this one and the heartless one but this is going to be my focus that i'm going to talk to you about in the vlog i will update you later isn't this such a cute little spot <laughs> i feel so like cozy and moody i got my candle and yeah i had a great night and then like i was on the subway and this woman sees my like book of the month bag that says like book pocket or whatever like it's very bookish bag and she's like oh you were part of book of the month i'm like yeah and then we just started chatting books for the whole train ride like she wasn't even at the event she was just like this woman that like works in the public library here in new york and was just chatting with me and i was like all warmed up socially from interacting with strangers all evening um so yeah it's really nice so i've i've had quite the social day for an evening on my own for the most part um but that's all for now i will update you later i think we might be going ice skating tomorrow Hi, we are going ice skating in Bryant Park now. I did do a lot of reading on that Heartless book. I'm like almost 50% of the way through and I'm loving it so far. It's about a cowboy with a young son who needs a nanny, he's like five, and the best friend of the girl in the first book is there and it's their love story and I'm loving it. I'm here with Chase and Parth. We're about to head out. There's Chase. There's my friend Parth. <laughs> Um, and I will take you along. It's going to be a good time. So I'll see you there. It is another day and I have some reading updates for you. So I finished reading Heartless by Elsie Silvers. That's the cowboy Canadian single dad age gap romance I picked up in this vlog and I loved it. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. I rated it five stars on Goodreads. It was really sweet. I felt like the way their relationship evolved was very believable and natural and I really appreciated how the child in the story, this five-year-old boy named Luke, was more than just like a plot device. He was like a fleshed out character and he was so sweet and our heroine Willa fell in love with the child first. just taking care of him and seeing how sweet he was and how much he like needed like a woman figure in his life and then she slowly fell in love with the grumpy 
dad. <laughs> and yeah, I would totally recommend it. But I need to finish this book for this vlog. I've read the beginnings and chapter one, and I can tell that it's gonna be heartfelt. And even though I don't have my own kids, and even though I don't have a 13 year old daughter, just the way like the 13 year old is already giving the mom such a hard time, I like can relate to the mom so much. I'm like, oh my God, if this kid was saying this kind of stuff to me, like, I don't know, man. So I'm sympathizing with Yasmin a lot and I'm a, like not really spoiled, but after going to the talk, I know more, a lot more than I would have if I went in just off the synopsis, but I'm still intrigued. In the clips before we went ice skating with Parth and that was really, really fun. Parth wanted to practice his ice skating skills. So I was like trying to help him a little bit. Not that I'm like particularly good, but I know how to like move forward. <laughs> I was giving him some tips and he was getting much better. He was having a great time. Like he wasn't moving very fast, but he was happy. And that's all we can ask for when we're going to the rink. We just want to have fun. Um, I love it all the time, but it made me kind of miss roller skating. I didn't roller skate at all this past summer, but maybe I can convince some people to get some skates and skate with me because that way we can have about the same experience without being freezing. <laughs> so uh, that was a fun adventure. That's all I have for now. So I'm going to do some reading. Talk to you in a bit. Hi, it is another day and I have been reading before I let go. I'm about a quarter of the way through. So I pretty much read the entire beginning. So I think anything I tell you isn't really that much of a spoiler, but it's got me in my feels already. It's got me sad for their lost relationship. Obviously the two characters are divorced. This is a second chance romance. I don't know all the details of how things went down, but I do see both perspectives, both literally and um, not quite emotionally yet. I'm pretty much on Yasmin's side because I have her perspective the most. Her ex-husband Josiah is kind of pissing me off. <laughs> it has been two years since their divorce and Josiah is taking steps to move on. He's seeing another woman and it really sucks because they their lives are still really entangled together like Yasmin and Josiah. So they're obviously raising their kids together. They own a restaurant business together and Josiah's dating their head chef. And he didn't communicate that with her, with like Yasmin at all. And his excuse was like, oh, we told each other we'd tell, you know, we'd discuss if we were dating other people for the kids, but like the kids already know the head chef really well. So I thought that was shady as fuck. Like that is so rude. Um, Hey, I'm back, sorry. <laughs> My dad was calling me. Um, he wanted to know what we were doing when I visit them after Thanksgiving. Um, but anyway, where was I? Oh, <laughs> yeah, so Josiah's been like seeing some other woman and he's been like flaunting it. Mm, I mean, not like brazenly flaunting it, but it's still like really in uh, Yasmin's face and it makes me so angry. <laughs> I read those parts and I'm like, fucking bitch like I hate this poor girl and like if I was reading it as like Josiah's and Vashti's romance I'd be like oh yeah forget the ex-wife like she needs to move on she wanted the divorce but I know I'm reading for Yasmin so I'm like forget this young girl who does she think she is you know so that's why I like romances too because you know whose side you're on and stuff and that's why I also don't love love triangles but yeah, I've also met her two good friends. It's really nice to see like grown women have close relationships with other women who are supportive. Um, so I like that in the story as well. So I'm really interested to see how they heal throughout all this pain and how they come back together. Because after I went to the talk, you know, I'm realizing in this first 25% of the book that I've hit some of the things they mentioned about like their pain and how they ended and like the conflict of the early parts of the book. So I'm glad they didn't spoil too, too much. Um, but yeah, I, I literally have no idea how they're gonna come back from this. No idea. Ugh, and my heart hurts for her. I'm like so enraged for her too. Like 
the emotion Kennedy Ryan's writing provokes is just so strong. Anyway, I'm going to read. It's Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and it's basically Friday. So Parth just texted, and maybe we'll get dinner or something. I don't know what the move is. I want the move to be dinner. <laughs> He's texting me. All right. Uh, I will talk to you again when I have another update or when I'm doing something fun. I'll see you later. I'm shook up right now. I'm in pain. I'm upset. I'm so hurt for her. <laughs> People say that like chapter 13 is really rough. Um, and it's sad because it's like a flashback to when things ended and like how that went down. But chapter 14 just rattled my soul, man. I'm so upset. I would be so upset. I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything, but like, it's just things I've kind of told you already. Like her ex-husband is like dating this other woman and just, I just can't imagine. Well, I can't imagine because I feel the pain, but I'm sure it would be so much worse firsthand of the things that Yasmin has to fucking put up with and see and witness and feel and like her and her ex, like I'm seeing both their perspectives. You can see that they're still, they're at least still like physically attracted to each other. They still have love for each other because they're like involved in each other's lives a lot still like the kids in the business and stuff. Um, but they're really, really hurt, you know, they're hurt from the tragedies that happened back to back, um, in their lives. And they just couldn't like, they just weren't on the same page and that's why they got divorced. But there were a lot of like really good times too. And it's just really freaking heartbreaking and I'm really upset. <laughs> And the book is really good too because like I need to like leave and go to the gym because it's getting kind of late. It's Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. But I just want to keep reading this book. But I'm like so upset. I'm like, when are we gonna get to like the hopeful part? <laughs> I'm almost halfway through and I'm just like, can we see the light at the end of the tunnel? Because I'm so devastated right now. I'm being tortured. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I just wanted you to like, I just wanted to be able to talk to you while I was still feeling it. Um, but yeah, I am like so uncomfortable and so angry and so upset for her. I just want to get to the happy part. I just want to get to the happy part. All right, I'm gonna go. Bye. Hi, it is another day. It is Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. I was at Chase's parents' house yesterday and we had a great Thanksgiving dinner and now I'm at my parents' house visiting them for the long weekend. I have a reading update. I stayed up so late reading before I let go. I was like up till two in the morning. I tried to go to sleep, but I was like, I need to know what's gonna happen. And I'm really loving it so far. I think it's sitting at maybe like, like a 4.5. So I'll probably round up to a five, we'll see. But yeah, that book has been hurting me, hurting me. But I think, I think I'm like, I have a hundred pages left and we have recently turned a corner, sorry, animal hair. And we've recently turned a corner into like a hopeful aspect of their relationship. Like, I don't know if it's like, it's not like they're on the same page with anything, but they've had a chance to, I don't know. They just had, they just had like a really good moment. I don't want to give anything away because I didn't know this was going to happen, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. They both want each other clearly. Things are happening that I don't want to spoil. Um, but I'm glad that we've turned the corner. So my despair can finally lighten up. I was like, so upset reading that first half of the book um not because it was bad but because like the situation the characters were in i was like no please stop i know you guys are end game so seeing you guys be so miserable is tough um anyway uh that's my reading update clearly i'm in like a construction zone my parents are renovating their house and i'm so excited for them it's so so nice so far i can give you a cute little look around if you like let me show you. Okay, so we can start at the front door. They have a new door. 
This is like the base flooring. You come in, this used to be like our formal dining room and it's still gonna be that, but there used to be a wall here and like a little hallway and now it's all open. They opened this all up. It used to have like a closet with the washing and washer and dryer, but now it's all open. And you can see this beautiful bay window that I was just standing in front of. And their new cabinets, the countertops will come soon. So this used to have like a vaulted ceiling and a step was here, step down, but they leveled the floor, they leveled the ceiling. If you've seen my like summer barbecue vlog, you'll see like how the house was before they did anything. Um, so this is completely different. Like this is the same kitchen space that was like all kind of orangey and everything. Uh, and now it's so different. Like the window used to be here. Now they added two new windows. This sliding door has moved to the side. And then this is the living room. So the TV used to be here. There was a couch and the fireplace had all this stonework that they ripped off. And this used to be a closed wall too. And now they're opening it up. So it's making this whole side of the house so much brighter. The bathroom door used to be here, but they moved it to over here. So the bathroom will be here with the window. This used to be like a, like a bar area, but we never really used it. We just used it as storage for like snacks. So yeah, so much more light will come through because before this side of the house used to be so dark because the sun sets on the front side of the house. So by the evening, like the afternoon. It's like a dungeon on the back side of the house, but all of the main living areas are on the back side of the house. So opening everything up is gonna make the place so much brighter and I'm just so happy for them. My mom is so excited. My dad is obviously very excited. And then they're gonna do like stuff upstairs as well, but they haven't started that yet. Originally when I asked them, they were like, oh yeah, it should be done by Thanksgiving. I was like, mm, not with these uh, supply chain delays and everything. So now they're hoping it's all done by February, which, I'm crossing my fingers too because we're planning on doing my bridal shower here at the house and my wedding's in March. So that's like cutting it really, really close. So yeah, no, I'm crossing my fingers too. <laughs> that's my update so far and I will catch you later. Hey, so I am back home and I did finish before I let go like two days ago and I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it a solid four stars. Let me try to give some kind of analysis. <laughs> I thought the discussions on therapy were really good and something I could relate to more personally since I've been going to therapy myself now for a couple weeks, couple months, I guess. It has really helped. Like even if you don't feel like you have major trauma or anything like that. Just having someone to speak to and bounce ideas off of and give you different perspective and maybe work on the things you are insecure about or things that you want to improve in your life. It could really help out with that. So especially if you have the right person, it might not be a perfect fit with each therapist, but if you keep trying, you might find the one that suits you the best. So I really did like that aspect in the story. I thought the stakes were really, really high in the beginning. Like it was ripping my heart out, like what was keeping them apart. But once we kind of got into the second half, the conflicts weren't as obvious to me. Like what was keeping them apart was no longer there and it was mostly just in their own heads. So like the tension was lost for me a little bit but it was still really fun and I'm so happy I read it. I'm so happy I got to meet Kennedy Ryan. Yeah, definitely I would recommend this. It, de um, sorry, I'm saying definitely a lot. It, I was gonna say it again. It leans more women's fiction for sure. I have heard people say that and I have to agree. There obviously is romance. Like you can't read it and think it's not a romance book, but it's mostly on Yasmin's story and like overcoming what led to the divorce and healing from her grief and finding herself again, even if she can't be the same person she was before the trauma, being closer to that person again and finding joy and hope again. So definitely women's fiction <laughs> with some romance and you do get uh, Josiah's point of view. Um, so there was commentary, like Kennedy Ryan said, in the meetup 
or <laughs> at the book event is that there is this like negative view that black men have towards therapy and we need to break that a little more and i've seen people in my real life who are black men that are going to therapy and i think it's great and it benefits everyone so much more and their children you know they had i think i told you this but like their son was going through therapy too and he was feeling so confident in it not ashamed of it and that's what they were really proud of in like the next generation when it came to taking care of their mental health so all those discussions were great solid four stars i would definitely recommend so that's all i have for this vlog i hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already and i'll catch you in another video bye